Hi, how are you? Hope you're well. So today I am here to continue reading a series I started last year this time ish and that series would obviously be Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. So I'm rereading book one. Currently as we speak I started it yesterday and that book is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. I'm not far into it at all whatsoever but yes book two just came out which is Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands. These titles are so hard to say my goodness and then i know there's a third book coming out at some point i'm pretty sure it's a trilogy hopefully so i'm rereading book one because last year when i read it i was entering into a pretty bad reading slump so about 10 to 20 percent of the way through i don't know if i was just doing something else that took way too much of my attention or if i just zoned out and didn't really care because of the reading slump or like what happened but from about 10 to 20 percent up until like 75 to 80 percent completely zoned out i have basically no idea what happened aside from the beginning and the end of the book so i wanted to reread book one before reading book two because i felt like i i felt like i needed the reminder and i didn't want to go into book two without essentially reading book one Like I said, I just started book one. I'm about 14% into the book so far and I'm feeling a bit iffy on it to be perfectly honest. One thing that I'm enjoying though is the first time that I read this, I didn't know who the love interest was. I never read the back of the book so I didn't know who the love interest was. So I thought it was a different person to who it actually was. So now I know who it is and I know to look out for their conversations and it's been really fun now because I can like see like their really weird ways of like conveying that they like each other and like seeing how kind of blind she is to him liking her and how she likes him but she thinks she it's very very cute one example would be he wrote her a letter and he drew a little portrait of her and he said i miss seeing you across the hall because they're co-workers and he drew a little picture of her and she called it a character and she said he had the goal to make me look pretty and it's just like girly he thinks you are pretty how are you like this dumb you're a professor so it's really cute so far it just even though they're not even together yet, just like seeing their interactions, like I genuinely, genuinely love the romance arc of this book so much. Like it's so cute and it just, it makes me genuinely so happy. Yeah, so I'm really enjoying the romance arc so far and he hasn't even shown up so I cannot wait for him to be in the picture but thing that I'm finding iffy is it's very much like a cozy fantasy I do remember some plot points like later on in the book what happens but it is a very slow start to the book and so far it's basically just her gallivanting in a field looking for fairies and then insulting the town that she lives in on accident so yeah it's it's interesting but it's a bit boring so I do find it hard to have it really like grip my attention. I'm trying really really hard to only listen to the book when that's the only thing I can focus on but I do find my thoughts drifting and I have to like reel myself back in a little bit. However I do just think that's kind of the nature of the book because one it's slow, it's a cozy fantasy with lower stakes and it just doesn't have like the thrill that other fantasies do which obviously it's it's a cozy fantasy i expected that going into it but it just does make it harder for me personally to be really like pulled into the story and then the writing style is beautiful and very well done however it is done as journal entries and the language that the character author uses is very flowery and intense and it's very much not old english but it's it's much more akin 
to that. So it's just a bit harder to fall into because it's not everyday language and everything like that, which I'm sure you can understand if you're a reader, sometimes certain types of ways of speaking is just harder to get pulled into. So I'm struggling a little bit with that, but listening to it is really helping. I did try and like read it physically the first time and I had to switch over to audiobook because the writing style, it felt like a textbook to my brain and I just could not get into it. So for me, this is an audiobook series and I think the audiobook really helps because since it's like journal entries, it kind of just feels like someone's telling you a story. Like you're in the bedroom with your friend and she's telling you about her adventures. So that part is definitely fun, but it is also just hard to become accustomed to, but I'm trying my absolute hardest to sit and focus on it. And it really just does take that brain power for me personally, which is fine. Since this is a reread, I knew that going into it and I know with the series, this is just a series, I need to listen to it on a slower speed. I need to focus on it and it's gonna take me a while to get through and I'm perfectly fine with that. This year has been a slow reading year for me so far anyway. So it's not like it's really like, slowing the pace down or anything. It's taken me weeks to finish books just normally. So I am enjoying it so far and I'm excited to see <laughs> everything that I missed. And I just, I, I can't wait for the love interest to show up. This is definitely going to be spoilers. I just find it a lot easier to do spoiler reading vlogs when I'm doing a series, especially because in sequels, I can't talk about the sequels if I don't spoil what happened in the first book. So just know that going into it, that beyond this point, there is definitely going to be everything spoiled. And I'm excited to go on this journey. Like I've mentioned many times, I've been reading a lot of dark books lately, and it's going to be nice just going into a lighthearted, cozy fantasy, and then I'm reading a different fantasy, which is just, it's so silly and stupid, and I'm happy to finally be out of, like, this dark era that I've been in all of January and February for some reason. I'll be back when I have more to say, and I'm a bit farther into it right now. Not much has happened yet, so... So I finished Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies yesterday and I was so sad that it was over. Like I completely forgot that I had the sequel to look forward to and I was genuinely so sad. So previously I gave it a 3.5 stars and then this time around I actually upped it to a four stars because I just enjoyed it that much more. The reason it's not really higher is because it is just the tiniest bit boring as most cozy fantasies are. That's not a fault to the author or the writing or the plot or anything. Cozy fantasies tend to just be slower and therefore the stakes are a bit lower. So there is unfortunately that, but it's not a bad thing. It's just because it's a bit slower paced and the stakes aren't as high as a epic fantasy might be. But yeah, that's to no fault of the author. I really, really loved it. This time around, I actually knew to look out for a Bumblebee and really pay attention to their conversations and it was so much fun. I really, 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 really enjoy their banter and them together. I genuinely look forward to the scenes that they are together. I stand by the fact that the love confession is so good and funny. I genuinely want to buy the book just to highlight that part, but that would be criminally insane of me to do. <laughs> so I'm not gonna do that because I am running out of bookshelf space. So I'm not buying a book to highlight one page, but I do very, very, very much love the romance. I love the characters and I love how quirky Emily is and grumpy and just kind of mean, I guess. I don't know, but I do really, really enjoy her. Bumblebee is just a little, little ray of sunshine, I guess you could say, but I really, I just enjoy them. I love the whole opposites attract thing, but yet they suit each other so well and in general it just it's such a good romance and they just click so well i genuinely love it so much i don't know i technically started book two this morning right before filming this however i don't know where it's taking place i'm really really going to miss i think it's called haraven speak haraven seek i'm i don't remember the little small town that book one takes place in but if it's not set there i'm really going to miss it i 
really enjoyed the setting, I really enjoyed the people, and I'm genuinely just going to miss them so much. Right now, in book two, they're in Cambridge, the university where they work, so I don't know if they're going to be traveling or if this book takes place at the university, but probably not going to be at um, Harabinsvig, so that's sad. I'm gonna miss, I'm gonna miss that little small town. I've grown very attached to the characters, however I get why it's not there, because I story's getting closed. So yeah, I'm very excited to see how Bambleby and Emily's relationship progress. A part of me is a little worried that they might not end up together because I don't know if this is classified as a romance or not. I could check that actually, so I'm gonna do that. Okay, so it is classified on Storygraph as a fiction fantasy historical book. So there is a romance subplot, but it's not categorized as a romance, meaning there is a there is an opportunity for them to not end up together, which is kind of terrifying. <laughs> But my hopes are my hopes are high. I would be crushed if they didn't, but you know, when life gives you lemons, I guess. I this is purely speculation. I'm just scared because I really like them together. But he proposed to her in book one and then she doesn't want to get married. So it's just it's seemingly going toward like, I don't know. I don't know. It's very up in the air. And then also, I do know that this is not the final book. There's more books in the series. I don't know how many. I thought it was a trilogy, but they keep referring to this as the Emily Wilde series, not trilogy. So I don't know if there's going to be more than three books in the series. I guess we'll just have to find out. However, it's definitely still very... um fresh and new and I'm just speculating, but I'm excited to start book two. I'm excited to see where this goes. This takes place in, it seems like, September through December of 1910, so I'm really hoping for some more winter vibes because I absolutely loved that in book one, so I'm really looking forward to some winter vibes and then in general kind of just hoping it's a bit less icky I guess than book one. Book one really isn't that gruesome but there were just like there was one scene there was one scene that really like revolted me it's the finger scene but yeah I'm very excited for them to find Bumblebee's door and show us the his world and everything I hope that we do more of that in this book however I have a feeling that that might be saved for book three and book two might be another little mystery that just gets them closer to Bumblebee's door I'm not sure I think I'm maybe five percent at most into book two so I really don't know where we're going but in general book one it was so much fun to reread I just had such a great time I'm very much looking forward to getting into book two I am hoping to devour it I think it's gonna be a great fun time good things are happening and I will see you a little bit later. Hi, so I'm about 64% into Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands and I'm enjoying it so much. I do think that this one is definitely a lot more adventurous than book one, which has been very fun. And then also, there are more characters in this one in terms of like the actual research. I love book one so, so much, okay? So I don't mean this in a bad way against book one, but with this one, there's another researcher that came with her. So now it's Emily, Wendell, and some dude named Rose. I, I keep forgetting his name. I think his last name is Rose though. And then she also has her niece there who is studying to also be a fairy scientist. I forget what the term is. So it's a larger group which is definitely interesting. And then this mystery is very fun. There's a lot less of like the townsfolk in this one, which makes me the tiniest bit sad because I really, really loved the whole welcoming aspect of the townsfolk in book one. However, there's a part that just happened where they went to go find Danny de Grey and they started getting attacked by Fawn and then the townsfolk came and like saved them. So I do think maybe we'll get a little bit more 
of that interaction which I'm very excited for if that happens because it's just it's so good. She has not yet accepted the proposal but she's definitely going to. Like they're gonna be a couple maybe they won't get married but they're gonna be a couple like they're so cute. They spent the night together. We didn't see that thank god. <laughs> We didn't- there's no spice in this, which I'm very happy for because this book does like not call for spice at all. But they're such a cute couple. I love them together. You can just see that from book one you could tell he's so in love with her. But she's also just so in love with him and it's just so sweet watching her constantly care for him and then him care for her and just- they both keep getting into something and then having to get each other out and I just- I think it's so cute. I am worried Shadow might die because she keeps mentioning his age and she even gave him a special collar to make him not younger but younger type of thing. So I'm very worried that Shadow is gonna die and Heather, we don't kill off pets in novels, okay? Okay? Don't, don't kill Shadow off. I haven't finished it yet, so I don't know if he dies in this book, but if Shadow dies, I will sue. But yeah, really loving it. Uh, I can't wait to finish it and check back in. I definitely think this is also going to be a four star or around there. And I'm just having such a good time. And the writing is so beautiful. Like this is one of those books where I just feel so inspired when I'm listening to it because it's just written so beautifully and so well that it's just, it's hard not to listen to it and just feel like you can be on top of the world. I don't know how to explain it, but I find the writing just very inspiring and wonderful and lovely and I'm just very happy. This series makes me very very happy so yeah. I'll be back once I've finished it. Yeah unless something else happens but I doubt that. Well I mean other stuff you know what I mean. I'll be back by the end of it unless something big happens. Okay goodbye. Hi, I'm sick so ignore the fact that I'm in bed and I look like shit. <laughs> I finished Emily Wilde's Map of the Other Lens actually a little bit ago. Like I said, I've just been sick and super busy so I haven't really gotten time to talk about it. I ended up really really enjoying it. I just, I really love this series. I love how exciting it is but still cozy and comfortable and like I love the fact that it's a series that I can be enthralled in but not stress over. It has the perfect balance of exciting and mundane to make it kind of just like perfect especially for like the mood that I'm in. I've also really grown to love the journal format of this series which I was struggling with at first and I really enjoy the fact that it feels like she's almost speaking to us. Like, I know it's a journal entry for her own personal self, but it does almost feel like she is writing us a letter of just everything that's happening. And it kind of just feels like we're talking with our best friend who we don't get to see often and we're kind of just like info dumping everything that happened, but like in a good way. So I really like that format. I've grown very used to it and like I said, I just genuinely love everything. I love Emily. I love Wendell. I love Shadow. We had some new characters, her niece and then a colleague. I don't remember their names, I'll be perfectly honest, but they were very enjoyable as well. I do miss the town of the first book, but you know, it is what it is and that's okay. I'm really excited for the third book because they're going to be in Wendell's kingdom in the fairy world and I'm very excited to see how the author tackles describing that especially since Emily will have Wendell's magic protecting her so she'll actually be able to fully see everything that's happening and remember everything so I think that's going to be really fun and exciting and I genuinely cannot wait for the third and final installment at least I hope it's the final I'm pretty sure it's a trilogy but I don't remember where I saw that so I guess we will see. Emily and Wendell, Wendell, why can't I say his name today? Emily and Bumblebee are also just absolutely adorable together. I genuinely love them so much and I'm so happy that she said yes to his proposal. I was very worried that they wouldn't end up together especially since I don't think this book is classified as a romance but she said yes. The crumbs are crumbing. We love it and them. 
So yeah, I have no complaints. I don't think I've said this yet. I ended up giving this book a four star. I'm just, I'm very happy to have read it, to be enjoying it. It's just, it's really fun for what it is and I genuinely just love it so much. And it's also just, again, really nice to have a fantasy that is very exciting and enthralling and intriguing, but also not that serious. Like, Akatar and the Throne of Glass series, for example, are so, 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 so serious and it's about war and this and that and it's just nice to be able to read a fantasy book where the conflict is kind of just like something bad happening to the main character. It's not like the world's imploding. So it's very nice and I'm enjoying my time with it. And yeah, I genuinely just can't wait for book three. Will I be rereading these two books? I don't think I need to, but I will. So I'm excited. I'll definitely make a reading vlog for the third book. Hopefully it ends well. And I'm just, I'm very happy. This is almost a series that I need especially for where I am in my reading journey. It's definitely turned the reading year around for me quite a lot. So yeah, I'm happy, I'm excited, and I'm also sad because I don't want to wait for a book if you've read this series, let me know what you think of it. Do you like it as well or do you think it's a bit mundane? If you like me or my videos, I would really appreciate a like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like it. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much.